<clears throat> Jesus touched people, they were healed. People touched Jesus, they were healed. Jesus gave a command, people get healed. <clears throat> Jesus granted their request, people got healed. Do, do you see a pattern here? <clears throat> now watch. People were healed by touching Jesus' garment, the cloth that was on his body. They got healed. People got healed by cloths, aprons, and handkerchiefs that were sent out from Paul. Right? Now watch. John Lake touched a post in Africa when he was there in South Africa. Went out because there were so many people. He couldn't minister to them. He was actually trying to find a place to get some rest because so many people were coming. And so he found this little village and he went into it and people heard he was there and they all started coming in. And so he wasn't getting any rest. So he said, okay, here's what I want to do. He went out and where they used to tie up the horses in the center of the, of the village there. He went out and put his hand on it. And he said, whoever touches this post after I leave will be healed. He left and it is recorded that approximately 70,000 people over the next two months walked past that post touched it and were healed touching a post amen <clears throat> now <clears throat> people were healed I'll give you another two other examples here people were healed when Wigglesworth told them whoever stands up first gets healed of whatever they got <laughs> and whoever stood up got healed it didn't matter what and they got healed isn't that amazing now notice that is just like the pool of Bethesda whoever gets in first see God likes people and he meets people whenever they are determined and they are focused because these people had to be focused. When that water was troubled, they had to get in there. So they had to be focused. They couldn't be distracted. Oh, oh, the water. Oh, well, somebody just got in there ahead of me. No, they had to be focused on it. God likes focus. Amen? Now watch. <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, there was a great Syrian general. We all know him, right? He was healed when he dipped into a muddy river called the Jordan. Okay, why? Because he obeyed a prophet's command. Imagine, I'm just showing you different ways. A, now, a woman was delivered, uh, this was several years back now, but I remembered it when I wrote this down. A woman was delivered when I set her free through a command and I touched her with two fingers and she was completely set free. She had a devil and it was seriously manifesting and she was instantly set free. There was no effort, there was no push, there was no, you know, no, no theatrics. It was just, she, she came up, uh, long story short, she ended up falling to her knees at one point, and I just reached over and I said, I, I set you free by the finger of God. Boop. And she was completely free. Her face changed, her eyes changed, everything. She looked around and said, where am I? She didn't even know how she got there. That's how demon-possessed she was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, when we were in South Africa, uh, Babies were healed of HIV when the mothers would hand them to me. Burning up with fever and I'd hold the babies and pray for people. Never pray for the baby. Never pray for it. And these were several different times. They would hand them to me. I'd walk around and they were so hot. They were just soaked in sweat. And I was just walking and I was still praying for people. And then the mother would be there and I'd hand the mother back and all the fever would be gone and the baby was healed. Never prayed for it. This happened many, several, well, many times I would say because it's more than several many times then when I was in uh, Indonesia same thing happened the baby a mother handed the, the crowd was so thick that there was no getting two people and the mother passed the baby across the crowd to get to it or to get her to get the baby to me I took the baby and I was trying to wade in through the people and walk through them and I was just holding the baby and just praying for people and they were all sitting on the floor so I was doing this and then when I in South Africa. But this baby had high fever. When I handed it back, it went past people. When it got to the woman, the woman started screaming and crying, yelling, uh, because the fever was all gone. And, and so, and I never prayed for that baby. Listen, I'm not saying don't pray. I'm just saying don't limit God. Yeah. Look, look how many ways. Look at all this stuff. Yeah. It, it's almost like God is trying to use any way he can to get people healed. Amen. It's like he'll do anything. Amen. He, he will meet you wherever you are. You, you know, the, as I always said, the biggest hindrance to healing is that people believe there are hindrances to healing. 
So the real key is to get rid of the hindrance to healing. Amen? Get rid of that mindset that well, it has to be like this. No, it's hard. It's hard. We got, we got to do this. And you know why it's hard? It's hard because you tried before and you failed. That's why it's hard. Or you heard of somebody's failure. But I'm telling you, faith isn't hard. It's easy to trust the most dependable being ever. Amen. It's easy to trust God. Listen, you've got to go out of your way not to trust Him, especially if you're born again. If you're born again, faith is in you. It is in you. Why? Because if you're born again, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? Amen. So that love is in you. And guess what love does? Love believes all things. So it's natural for you to believe. You're in a state of belief right now if you're born again. You started believing. Have you stopped believing? No, you're still believing. Isn't that right? So believing is your natural state. Now the key is you've got to move from believing to faith. And moving from believing to faith is as simple as an action. Because faith is nothing but believing with action. Amen? Now, finally. Yes, I think we're about done. <laughs>